Hey guys, a few of you asked how I shaded with the airbrush for a walking dead cake I did, so I thought I'd put this together for Tutorial Tuesday. I've just got a cake that is roughly covered in ganache and sugar paste and it's been textured with tin foil. You can see a short time lapse in one of my vlogs attached in the iCard above. Now for walking dead cake such as woodland scenes, I will first give the rock some green spots for moss. But this was a dry American rock style so we're going straight in with the base coat. This is my airbrush gun. I like ones with large cups on the top so I can mix colours in it and hold enough for a large job. It's also great if you tend to spill from the little cups a lot like I do. It's also a dual action gun which means it does two separate jobs. If I push down on this button it only pushes out air not colour. The colour only comes out when I pull back the trigger. So I have to push the button down and pull back for it to spray the colour. But I love this as I feel it gives me far more control than a single action gun, which shoots both colour and air at once. I am able to control the air flow and the colour flow to adapt it to the job I'm doing. But of course, your choice of gun is all personal preference. The colours I use are water based and called chroma colours. These ones are less likely to clog your airbrush and cause spitting. And yes, with weekly use, your bottles will look like this too. Just keeping it real. They have pop tops which allow you to pop a few drops in at a time. I always spray on kitchen roll first, just in case there's any remaining colour hanging around from the last job. We don't want a purple rock. As you can see, only air comes out when you press the button, but slowly pull back and it will release the colour. The more you pull back the trigger, the faster and more colour will come out. Now we just want to give the rock a base colour. You will see as I spray on in circular motions the colour will settle on the texture of the cake, enhancing all the lumps and bumps. This is the brown chroma colour straight from the bottle. It's an orangey brown colour in real life, it does show differently on the camera. You can also mix your colours to create new ones. I mix pink and yellow ones to make a bright coral. If you have an airbrush but you've been too scared to use it, then rocks are a good start to play on, you can't really do too much damage. If you have yet to get an airbrush, then I do recommend one. I use mine almost weekly, but I suppose it does depend on your style of cake. I've left my gun and compressor links in the description box. My little elephant compressor has been going strong for at least 5 or 6 years now. The key to airbrushing really is to build it up. If you spray too harshly in one area, you could saturate it and cause drips, so build it up gently. It will be wet and shiny, this is normal, but don't wet it too much that it starts dripping as you won't be able to fix it without hiding it with a decoration. I'm a bit of a master at that. Ok now for shading, see this deep crevice here? In real life this would be dark inside, a bit like a cave would be darker the deeper it gets. I've still got the same brown but now I'm bringing my gun closer to the cake for more precision. Further away creates a light coating all over and bringing the gun closer will airbrush a more concentrated area. Now I'm building up colour in the hole to make it darker. On camera it looks rather wet and it will be wet and shiny but in real life it's not quite as shiny as it's showing here. Now look for other crevices, see these little channels here? You want to deepen the colour on the parts that don't stick out much. The parts that are raised, in theory, are capturing the sun more and possibly casting shadows on the parts that are recessed. Similarly, when water runs down a rock it will do so in the recesses, making them dirtier or darker than the exposed ridges. It may also be darker underneath the edges and ridges like this small overhang on the top. Just work your way around the cake deepening the colour. Remember as it dries it may dry darker so don't overdo it, you can always add more if needed. You can see, leaving the raised bits pale and the lower bits dark, it enhances the effect. Just so you can see what else it can do, if you're going real close with your gun and a steady stream, you can draw with it. Here I'm just adding some vine or crack details, it's similar to how you draw trees. Next up is black, my most used colour. 
Again, spray first on paper. You'll see brown comes out first that was left in the needle. Finally, followed by the black. Use this to add further depth, again concentrating on the darker areas. You can also use black to dim your main base colour if needed. I've also put a patch on the top where a figure will stand so it looks like a shadow. And that's it, now just let it dry and see how it looks. Don't forget you can always go back in with more if you're not happy but you can't take it away. Here it is mostly dried. You can see it looks more matte apart from the deeper areas which are still yet to fully dry. Have a play around with various colours such as the green for mossy areas or purple for a mystical look. And just remember, when you blow your nose and it comes out brown, you're not ill, it's the airbrush. Some days, after a lot of cakes, you can make a pretty impressive pattern in a tissue. You can tell your kids that you can sneeze rainbows. Hope this tutorial helped a little. Thank you guys, see you next week.